So here's a quick uh, video on gas stoichiometry um, aimed at grade 11 chemistry in either the regular or the advanced class. This particular question will involve uh, a few different aspects. Let's jump in and see what we can do. So oxygen gas is being produced by the decomposition of potassium chlorate. We can see the equation down below and we notice right away that's not a balanced equation. Um, forgive the little bit of a issue with the font, the O2, that 2 is kind of far away from the O. So why don't we quickly balance the equation, All right? If you are watching the video, you can pause and try to balance that yourself on a piece of paper. So the issue seems to be the O's, there's 3 on the left and 2 on the right, and 3 and 2 both go into 6, so let's balance that by putting a 2 in front of potassium chlorate, a 3 in front of the oxygen, and then that 2 in front of potassium chloride means we need to put a 2 in front of the KCl as well. All right, so there I think we have a balanced equation. Now the question is, what volume of the oxygen would be produced at this temperature and this pressure um, by decomposing one gram of the potassium chlorate? And then we're also told that the vapor pressure of water is 32 millimeters. I, I neglected to point out up above, it says that the oxygen is being collected by water displacement. Okay, it's being collected over water. So let's jump in. We're looking for the volume of the oxygen and we know the temperature and we know the, we know pressure, although we do have a bit of an issue there. Um, so how would you find volume of a gas if you know the temperature, you kind of know pressure? Um, well, hopefully you're thinking that you'd use the ideal gas law. So PV is nRT. We can rearrange that and say the volume of the oxygen would equal the moles of the oxygen times RT divided by the pressure of the oxygen. I'm putting little subscripts beside there just to remind ourselves moles of oxygen and pressure of oxygen. So what do we actually know up in the question? Well, the 303 Kelvin would be the temperature, so we do know that. Um, do we know the, the, the moles of oxygen? Do you see that in the question up above? I don't, right? So the uh, moles of oxygen is, is not given in the question, so if we're going to find the volume, we need to get the moles of oxygen. Um, but what do we know? We know the mass of potassium chlorate. Well, that hints to me that if I knew the mass of that reactant, we could do some stoichiometry. This is a gas stoichiometry question. We could find the moles of oxygen that would be produced with some unit multipliers. So I have a plan to get the moles of oxygen. What about the pressure of oxygen? Well, we are told a pressure. We're, said, we're, we're told that the oxygen is being collected by water displacement or over water, and it tells us the pressure is 784 torr. But then at the end, it mentions vapor pressure of water is 32 millimeters. Now, why did it tell us that? Remember that when you collect um, gas over water, you have to remember that you're not only collecting that gas. So in this case, we're not only collecting oxygen when we collect it over water. There's going to be a little bit of water vapor mixed in with the oxygen. So that means we need to consider Dalton's law because we have a mixture of gases. Dalton's law says the total pressure that in the, in the vessel, the test tube or whatever it is we're collecting it in, is equal to the pressure of the oxygen, which is what we are looking for to put in the ideal gas law, plus the pressure of water vapor, which is mixed in with our oxygen. So the way that question reads, we'll assume the 784 torr is the total pressure. And then the 32 millimeters mercury, or 32 torr, is the pressure of the water vapor. So then using those two pressures, we can find the oxygen's pressure by itself. So pressure of oxygen will be the total pressure minus the pressure of that water vapor, which would be 784 torr minus the 32. Remember that millimeters mercury and torr are the same things. 
So 784 minus 32 would be 752 torr. So now we know the pressure of the oxygen, but it's in torr. If we're going to use the ideal gas law, we can only use millimeters mercury or, sorry, we can only use atmospheres or kilopascals. So let's convert that. We'll take the 752 torr and we'll convert torr. I'll use atmospheres. One atmosphere is 760 torr. I'm going to grab a calculator and do that in just a minute. So now we know the pressure of the oxygen. We have the temperature of the oxygen. We have R. We still need to get the moles of oxygen before we can go find our volume. So that's where the stoichiometry came in. We knew up above that we were decomposing 1 gram, 1.00 grams, of the potassium chlorate. So let's do that. Okay, so we're going to take our 1.00 grams of potassium chlorate and convert that to moles of potassium chlorate. So we're doing stoichiometry here. And then using that balanced equation, convert the moles of potassium chlorate to moles of oxygen. So the balanced equation said 3 moles of oxygen for every 1 mole of potassium chlorate and 1 mole of potassium chloride, we just need to get its molar mass. So at this point, this, this difficult question has now essentially been completed. We, we realized to find the volume of oxygen, we were going to use the ideal gas law. So we rearranged it to get this N times R times T divided by P. Looking in the question, we said, well, we know the temperature and we know R but we don't know the pressure of oxygen. We knew the total pressure, but not the oxygen's pressure. And we didn't know the moles of oxygen. So that, that told us we had to go to the side and do these other calculations. To get the pressure of oxygen, we used Dalton's law and the water vapor pressure. We're just gonna go convert that to kilopascals or atmospheres. Here we're switching to atmospheres. And then we realized to get the moles of oxygen, Looking in the question, the only possible way to do that was to do stoichiometry. We were given the mass of potassium chlorate, so looking at the balanced equation, we realized we can convert that to moles of oxygen using some unit multipliers, which we have down below. We just need a molar mass of potassium chlorate, and we're done. So I'm going to stop here. I hope that helps in terms of understanding how to do a gas law problem and how to have it unfold in front of you. Okay? And you shouldn't look at the, the original question and just feel like you must know, must see an entire path from the beginning to the final answer. You have to have a, some comfort with some, with some, uh, with some uh, lack of clarity. But the question is, can you start it, right? So we started with the ideal gas law, and we, as, we, as we did that, we realized there were things we needed to go find, and that sent us on these other little side paths. And eventually, the final answer was there in front of us. So that little bit of struggling that you need to be able to do in a multi-step problem like this. So I hope that helps.